Welcome to the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences virtual event. I'm Professor Elsa B. Lewitz, the Dean of the Faculty. The Faculty hosts eight departments and a school for public management and administration. We are a proud member of the internationally renowned AACSB. Continued accreditation by national and international professional and statutory bodies clearly provide evidence of the quality of our programs. All our subject areas have in recent years been included in international subject ranking lists, with the most recent one being the 2020 Shanghai Rankings Global Ranking of Academic Subjects, where we were in the number one spot for finance and a joint first for economics in South Africa. Allow me to highlight why you need to choose UP for your BCom or B admin studies. The Department of Business Management offers programs that cover the entire business life cycle from the entrepreneurial phase to specific growth strategies and internationalization. The Human Resource Management Program provides a platform for generating and spreading winning workplace ideas. In our marketing management degree, industry partners provide real-life challenges to students to gain practical experience. Choose the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences at the University of Pretoria. Choose UP. Thank you, Prof. Lewitt. As mentioned earlier, we'd love for you to engage with us online. Leave your comments and your questions in the Q&A session for our Q&A session later. I see we've already got one comment from Megan Johnston. I'm so excited to join the EMS faculty next year. Hashtag choose UP, hashtag UPMS. Well, Megan, we look forward to welcoming you to our faculty next year. Up next, allow me to introduce to you Professor Yolanda Yordan from the Department of Marketing Management. Good afternoon, prospective students and parents. I'm the head of the Department of Marketing Management and I'm delighted to give you a sneak peek into what you may expect when you enroll for the BCom Marketing Management degree. Do you know that this university was the very first university in the country to introduce the BCom Marketing Management degrees? But first things first, in order for you to enroll for the BCom Marketing degree, you need an APS score of minimum 30. And this includes 60% or more for um, language and 50% or more for mathematics. Right, so why would you want to study marketing? Well, the one thing I can tell you is if you don't want a boring career, then marketing is for you. Because you know marketing is at the heart and soul of every business. Whether you are a one-man show, or whether you're a large corporation, you cannot do without marketing. Imagine an entrepreneur who has just developed a new product. What is the next step? Well, the next step is, who's going to buy my product? And exactly there is where marketing comes in. So the success of business is directly impacted by marketers. So what will you learn in this degree? Well, and I have a slide for you where I show you all the different marketing modules. What you need to understand is, of course, you'll have many other modules. Um, you'll, together with these marketing modules, you'll have 22 other modules, such as business management, economics, financial accounting, financial management, informatics, statistics, etc. But for the purpose of today, I'm just going to focus on the core marketing mo modules because that will give you an idea of what marketing entails. Right, so on first year level, we start with the principles of marketing. You need to know the basics, right, before you can do anything else. Then on second year level, uh, we do consumer behavior. Right, so we need to understand why do people make the decisions that they make? Right, so why have we seen that during COVID, people bought less fruit juice? We know they bought more pineapples. Right, so marketers need to get into the minds of consumers. Then also in your second year, we'll be doing integrated marketing communication. So as marketers, we need to communicate with our clients, with our customers. Um, and we do it on multiple platforms. 
If you think just about, you know, the recent years, how we have seen digital marketing growing, social media marketing, we suddenly see social media influencers. So it's an exciting module. Then on your third year, you do marketing research, right? So if marketers make decisions, we need to base it on facts. Where do we get the facts? Well, we do the research, right? And another module is marketing strategy. So finally, in your third year, you get to the point where you have to put everything that you have learned together into a strategy. And then I have one other module in your third year, and it says personal selling. And you'll see there's a little asterisk next to that word. And that's because it's a special module, a practical module in the degree. And I'm going to try and explain this module to you um, because, well, maybe I should first say the reason why we have this module is because many of our students start out um, in the sales environment. And that's why we have this very practical module. And I'm going to share a few photos with you to try and give you a glimpse of what this module entails. So in the top left-hand corner, so what happens? In the beginning of the module, we take all, so we take all our students um, on a factory visit. So currently, we are partnering with a fantastic company called Eteltal. So what they allow us to do is to take our students to the state-of-the-art Griffin factory so that our students can experience and get to know the products of Itelta. The next step, and you'll see it in the top middle, um, our students do job shadowing. So this is where they go into the Itelta showrooms and you get to shadow a sales manager to get an idea of what sales entail. But then even more exciting, the top right-hand corner, is where we put you in a situation where you have to do role play. So what happens in that, we put you in an assessment center, we have a sales manager of Ital there, and then you are put in the role as the salesperson. And in this sales scenario, you then have to, you know, do certain sales activities. And while this is taking place, we video record this so that you, the student, can watch it afterwards and see where did I go wrong and how can I improve? We have a multiple um, role play sessions so that you can grow and improve over the years. Um, if you look at the bottom photos, um, there's just, again, some of our students in the showroom and you'll see Tony, he was the sales student of the year and he won 10,000 Rand from Eteltal. Um, and then even better, after the module, what happened was um, our students got an opportunity for an internship with Eteltal. So imagine halfway through your third year, um, you see that um, I've been offered an internship due to this wonderful personal selling module. But it gets even better. And now I'm back to the slide of all the different marketing modules. And you'll see there's a, there's a plus um, practical project on second year, and there's a plus practical project on third year. And it's a little keyhole because that module really unlocks all the knowledge that you have gained so that you get the opportunity to apply this, no uh, this knowledge in, in a practical project. And I'm going to share, you know, I can talk a lot about the practical projects, but let me just share one example with you. So, for example, last year, we worked with a great company called Amca, and they manufacture Playboy and Playgirl deodorant. So what we do, we went to Amca and we said, listen, Amca, what are some of your marketing challenges? And Amca said the following. We have a need to increase the awareness and the market share of Playboy and Playgirl deodorant among a certain target group by developing a digital marketing communication campaign and an experiential in-store sales promotion campaign. Wow, so that's a mouthful. So what do we do? We put you into teams, we break this very intricate project into smaller chunks, and you work very hard on this project for a period of six months. At the end of the six months, you don't write exam, you get to present your solutions to the company. You'll get to engage with a brand manager, the marketing manager. Sometimes the ad agency sits in. And this is how you really get to experience marketing practically. Right, and there, again, I have a few photos for you, just in the top row, some of our students engaging in 
understanding the brand values, understanding the target market, developing certain strategies. And there at the bottom row, the first two, you know, the first group bottom left, um, this was, photo was taken just before they had to do their presentations to Coca-Cola. The middle group, we once did a project for Bridgestone. We worked on the super quick brand, and that group decided they're going to dress the part and impress the exam panel. And in the bottom right-hand corner is just a photo of our students doing some advertising when we worked on the Satterskin brand. Right, so, so in terms of career opportunities, I think the wonderful thing about marketing is that it is very, very diverse. Um, and it, there's really something for everybody. And it really depends on what kind of an individual you are. Either you say, you know what? I love people. I'm an extrovert. I absolutely love people. Well, then you can consider maybe going into customer experience, customer engagement. By the way, one of the buzzwords recently. Um, you can become, go into sales. You can go into public relations. Or you say, you know what, I love brands. Um, well, then you'll probably start out as an assistant brand manager, move up to a brand manager. You'll be involved in all the promotions, so you can be a promotion manager, or you be, can be a marketing manager where you manage all the different brands. Or you say, you know what? I love technology, right? I'm a technology geek. Well, fantastic. You can become a digital a strategist. You can become a social media manager. You can become a user designer, user experience designer, or these days, a customer experience designer. And by the way, we have a shortage in the marketing for, for some of these technologically related marketing careers. Or you say, you know what, I, I'm not kind of an extrovert. I love to work with numbers. Fantastic. Then you move into marketing research, or you become a marketing strategist or you become a marketing buyer. And I'm only mentioning a few. And then the last one, you say, I love to think outside the box. I'm creative, that's, that's who I am. Fantastic, you can go into advertising, you can write content, um, you can do, go into creative design. So here are just a few of the, of the career opportunities. Of course, there's, there's many, many more. So I really hope to see you in 2021. And my last message is hashtag choose UP. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof, for your presentation. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't want a boring career, choose marketing and choose marketing at UP. Next up, we have Asila Gigi with the presentation on business and supply chain management. Thank you, Asila. and parents at the University of Pretoria. My name is Asila Ajiji and this afternoon I'm representing the Department of Business Management. I am a lecturer in supply chain management and also the program lead for the BCom supply chain manage management degree. Thank you for tuning into this live session this afternoon. I would like to take this opportunity to provide you with a sneak peek into why you have made the right choice to consider studying one of our degrees. That is BCom Business Management and BCom Supply Chain Management. I will start off by sharing a little bit about the department and then about our two degrees, BCom Business Management and ending off with BCom Supply Chain Management. The Department of Business Management as a whole provides a comprehensive offering in the following key fields of management sciences. From the roots of business, we lay a strong foundation in entrepreneurship, the startup business, and I will touch on this again in a minute. Next, we have supply chain management, which is my speciality. It is the lifeline of any business and the wheels of a successful competitive strategy. So that is where my focus lies in. We also have a keen focus on business strategy as well as international management. We undou undoubtedly live in an un interconnected world and critical business decisions must be made for local as well as international markets. 
We have also cultivated and also grown our focus in ensuring responsible leadership as we practice business. For us, it is important to understand how organizations can position themselves in relation to society and how they can consider and exercise their responsibility towards society as a whole. Lastly, at the end of the business cycle, we also focus on businesses in distress by looking at turnaround strategies and also business rescue. We are, really a prou we are really proud of our diverse staff in these various areas of expertise. So let's have a look at the business, uh, BCom Business Management degree. So the BCom Business Management degree, the purpose of that degree is to really empower students as responsible entrepreneurs, responsible business managers, and responsible leaders that create shared value in an innovative manner. And we do this by equipping them with the knowledge, the skills, and also the attributes for, uh, for critical thinking. We equip our students with work readiness by cultivating the skills, self-sufficiency, and reliability and resources that are needed to land that perfect job and also obtain a good salary. Entrepreneurship is really a strong foundation that has been cemented within the degree of BCom Business Management. We strive to make our students aware of the opportunities to start something new and to solve existing problems by creating solutions that further enhance job creation. We also believe that businesses have a social responsibility to do good in and around their communities, and we cultivate this awareness and drive within our students as well. Lastly, as a department, we strive to attain the highest of quality standards within all of our degrees. At the present moment, the BCom Business Management degree is undergoing a comprehensive process of being accredited with the AACSB, which is the world's largest business education alliance. So in essence, these are the three pillars of business management. We have responsible leadership, entrepreneurship, and then business management itself. You're probably wondering what you will be studying and when you enroll for the BCom Business Management degree. So here's the list of modules from first year up to the final year of studies. You can see that in the, final, uh, the first year of studies, all students in the Faculty of Economic Management Sciences take the same foundational modules. And it's only in the second and third year that students start specializing in BCom Business Management. So that's where we have design thinking, creativity and innovation. We have business creation, which relates to entrepreneurship. We have logistics management, project management, and the other modules that you can see in the slide over there. In the third year, students spe specialize even more in BCom business management skills. Things like strategy formulation, strategy implementation, as well as international management and business analytics, our new module, is a, one of the, a few of the modules that are taken in the third year of studies. So in terms of job opportunities, there are various job opportunities out there for our students. You can either work in the private sector as a general manager, a project manager, or a business analyst, but of course you can also work for yourself. If you resonate with entrepreneurship, then maybe you want to start, to, want to start something new and become your own boss. That's also an opportunity. Speaking of entrepreneurship, the University of Pretoria's business incubator, UPBI, is also nestled within our department. The incubator assists students that have business ideas and wish to learn more about taking that idea into something concrete. So we host various events that are um, held within the university, university where industry speakers and successful entrepreneurs themselves come and speak to our students and provide them with some solid advice. We have had a number of students that have developed their own businesses, businesses that really make a change, that solve existing problems, and that are sustainable in nature as well. Then we have the Mamelodi Business Clinic, which is another avenue where we fulfill our social responsibility. The business clinic is set up to provide mentorship and business counseling to small businesses in and around the area. Our students get the opportunity to apply what they have learned in the classroom in a practical setting by visiting these small businesses and then providing business advice to, to uplift them. So that, in a nutshell, is the BCom Business Management degree. Next, I would like to share more about the BCom Supply Chain Management degree. So what is supply chain management? Well, it is a systems approach to managing the entire flow of materials, information, services, and finance from raw material suppliers through factories all the way to warehouses and to the end users. The idea of supply chain management is really that no one company operates in isolation. So it's all about integration of different companies to provide uh, customer service to the end consumer. 
Every company has a supply chain, even the university has its own supply chain. But the key thing here is to really un un understand how we can use that supply chain knowledge skills to bring out competitive advantage. Companies such as Amazon, Apple and Zara are a few of the companies that owe their success to su uh, successful supply chain management. It's a very exciting field, it's very practical and I'll share a little bit more as we go along. We are also very proud to be the first South African university to have obtained the accreditation with the European Logistics Association. And this accreditation is given to students that achieve a certain average throughout their degree, and they become the level four candidate European junior logisticians. This accreditation is huge for our students because not only do they have an advantage of, advantage of obtaining that degree, but now they also have a certificate that really shows their competence and marketable skills. We're also very proud to announce that our BCom Supply Chain Management degree is also in the process of being accredited with the AACSB, which I mentioned before. Also, another thing that I really want to mention here is that throughout our degrees, um, our, our BCom Supply Chain Management degree, students will be exposed to computer-based simulations where they have to take decisions for supply chain management and they also get to be exposed to various in industries through site visits. In terms of the modules that um, are taken for the BCom Supply Chain Management degree, you'll see that in the first year, those modules are the same as in BCom Business Management. So it's only in the second year that you will start specializing in modules such as purchasing and supply chain management, and as well as production and operations management. In the third year, students will specialize even further with modules like warehousing management, transportation management, and as well as supply chain strategies. In terms of career opportunities for supply chain management students, well, the career opportunities are really endless. The demand for supply chain graduates is ever increasing as companies are realizing the importance of manage the, managing their supply chains and also the lack of skills that they have in-house. So they are in need of these gra graduates. We host annual career days where companies come to our university specifically and only looking for supply chain graduates. Our students are placed in various areas of the industry and also around the world. With the ELA accreditation and soon to be the AACSB accreditation as well, our students can really explore their options beyond our borders. So I hope I have provided you with some informa new information and that you understand a little bit more about our degrees. We, we really look forward to welcoming you in 2021 in one of our degrees. Thank you. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you are looking for a career in business management or supply chain management, why not choose the Department of Business and Supply Chain Management at UP? Thank you, Asilla. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram. Our final presentation for this session will be from Professor Alive Null, who will be sharing a little bit of insights about the Department of Human Resource Management. Um, afternoon, I'm Alive Null. I'm the head of the Department of Human Resource Management, and it's my um, um, it's also my um, privilege just to share you what we can offer you in this program. So you can, you can also look into different ways what you can do with a degree and with our degree, especially you can actually specialize in three different fields. You can go into what, we, what the degree also already is labeled as become human resource management, you could go into HR, but you can also go in labor relations and also industrial and organizational psychology as well. So I just want to give you just a quick take on what um, each of these pro if each of those fields actually entails, and what's the difference of those of those fields, and also how do they actually um, also correspond with each other. So with human resource management, um, you usually focus more on the systems, procedures, and in order to make sure you have the right talent in the organization, you have the right skills, and if there's potential of skills, what type of training development um, um, interventions is needed for that organization. Then, for instance, if you're a library relations um, officer or a manager, then you focus more on the relationship between the employee and the employer by, um, based on the library relations and labor laws in South African legislation. And then, if you're in industrial psychology, you move more focus on the individual of the, of the um, organization, also on the group um, processes in the organization to make sure 
um, the, the well-being of your, of your colleagues and staff are taken, are taken into account. And then also to make sure that if there's any organizational type of issues, how do you um, have the relevant interventions in place in order to make sure that there is like a very um, better way of how to, to move into a new change that happens in the organization. So possible careers in that regard, you can be a consultant and usually also you can go also have be further have a HR specialist or you can go into counseling in that regard. So just for admission requirements, um, also for all our BCom degrees you need maths, but for specifically for HR and industrial psychology and library relations, you need maths, um, not literacy, but the, the full maths because you kind of work a, with a lot with numbers, especially with psychometrics um, and also with HR metrics. That actually is a very uh, prominent field in our, in, our, in, our, in our degree. Then just the curriculum, um, that you, I just have show you the holistic view of our curriculum. So you have all your BCom related uh, modules um, and then also in your, second, in, your, in your first year and second year, then you have more a focus on, on the psychology type of modules, and then your third year more on HR and library relations type of modules. So I just want to touch on more about what we do in those programs. So in the first year, you, usually we just do an introduction to industrial psychology and also human resource management, and also focus more on what is the psychology behind the work context. Then in the second year, we focus more on the group processes and organizational behavior and also on leadership, mentoring, and coaching. How do you uh, have the right coaching strategies and mentoring strategies in organization? Then in the second semester, you focus a lot on employee health and safety, which is very relevant at this stage, especially with the new situation we are, are in with COVID-19. How do you actually adapt to those type of measurements in your workplace? And then in the third year, we focus more on HR systems and management, and especially we're very proud of, that, uh, of our practical model that actually entails where students have to develop their own um, HR department and then have to start up a whole new process. How do they include all these systems, what you learned in your second year and your third year, in place in order to, to apply those, that type of knowledge? Then also in your third year, you also get more um, knowledge and also some um, experience on library relations um, with our degree as well. And then in your, in your postgraduate, then you can uh, specialize. So what is your role in the business? Usually you are a strategic partner because you have to understand the business side and also what's the organizational goals that you want to reach, and you have to understand how do you utilize your employees optimally in order to reach that goals. You also have to make sure there's also systems in place to make sure if there's change happening, immediate change, crises, and so forth, how do you deal with those that in, a, in a way that all employees are looked after in that way? And also you have to fight for your employees, so your employee advocate in the, in the, in the workplace as well. And also HR measurement is more the holistic elements. So there you look at the performance, you look at talent, you look at what, do you, what type of skilling, upskilling, and reskilling is necessary in order for the business to move forward. Um, also, just important to, to note, this is also our programs are created with two um, professional bodies. Um, the one is the South African Board for People Practices. So if you complete your degree, you can also already um, register as a HR practitioner with the South African Board for People Practices. And you can also, after a master's, so you have to continue on to your fifth year and do an internship in order to register as an industrial psychologist and doing an internship for a year, write the board examination, and then you can practice as an industrial psychologist. Just what is the general current and future positions you can look out for? So there's a, a huge amount of, of, of available positions in the field. Some of them are already in the development and some of them are futuristic. Um, because of the fourth industrial revolution, obviously we have to move forward with the change. And obviously with technology, what type of elements can we look at? So we look at all more at super jobs, we call it super jobs, you're gonna focus more on the humane you employees rather than the, all the systems in place. So that is usually the elements we look at when we look at future, what is what you can look forward to if you complete your degree with us. So then the question are, can you, can you picture yourself as a human resource manager? Can you see yourself in industrial psychology or library relations? So it is my, my just quick take on what we can offer you and I hope you will see you next year.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Nal, for that insightful presentation on the Department of Human Resource Management at UP. If you want to be industry ready, why not choose the Department of Human Resource Management at UP? It's now time to hand out our first bookmark giveaway to the value of a thousand rand. Bookmark is a stationery and a bookstore at the university's main campus. And our winner goes to Megan. Congratulations. I'm sure you're going to put that voucher to good use. Now that we've heard about the various programs within the management sciences, of the, in, within the Faculty of Economic Management Sciences, I'd like to take this opportunity to address some of the questions that you may have. I would li like to hand over to our panel, Professor Yolanda Yodan, Professor Alave Nal, and Asilo Gigi. Thank you so much for joining us. So our first question comes from Bianca. How will I know that my application was successful? I think, Prof Yodan, would you like to answer that question for us? Right, so students know that they, uh, Bianca, you applied online, right? And um, once you've applied online, you have access to your student portal. So it's very easy, you check your student portal and your updated status will appear on the portal. The moment you are admitted into a program based on your grade 11 results, you will also be sent an SMS. So just keep on checking your, your student portal for an update on the status of your application. Thank you so much, Prof. The next question is from Kiara, and her question is, I was wondering if it is possible to take marketing modules within the business management degree. Asila, would you like to answer that question for us? Yes, so uh, the business management degree, you, you, uh, you saw my presentation, you would see that marketing is a part of that, and it's taken all the way up to third year. So you are going to be taking that module throughout your career in business management. Maybe perhaps you would like to add, if maybe they can add the modules that they don't take in the business management degree right. there. So, so yeah, Kiara, so um, uh, of course marketing, like I said, you know, is the heart and soul of a business. So yes, it's part of the business management degree. There's some marketing modules that business management students can't take. So that's the practical modules that we keep, especially for our BCom marketing management students. But yes, we ensure that our business management students have a, you know, a good dose of, of marketing as, as part of the, the degree the degree program. Thank you so much, Asila and Prof. Yodan. Our next question is from Kusinati. What kind of practical experience can I gain during my studies at UP? Professor Alave Null, would you like to answer that question? <laughs> well, I think with most of the presentations, you can already have an idea. You can have a lot of experience and a lot of exposure on marketing side, on HR, and also business and supply chain. Um, especially with, uh, with all, all the degrees, especially on the exit level, um, you need to have that exposure. So a lot of industry is already very involved in our curriculum, and most of our degrees are accredited with professional associations. So it's very important to have industry involved because we have to make sure our students are employable after they the exit their BCom degree. Obviously, we have to revise and look at our curriculum and make sure we have practicability because we can't just teach theory. We have to make sure what we teach them can actually be applied and they can actually go into with the, with the skills, the entry skills in order to go into the workplace. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I can just add as well, man, within management sciences, we really do get our, our students ready. And there's so many practical projects that you can get involved in and, and be ready for the world of work. So thank you for that. Our next question is from um, Melody. Is there a huge demand for human resource management graduates, <laughs> Professor Null? <laughs> well, um, I, especially now, I think is most important. I, and with the situation we are in because of the remote work everything was just changed. Policies had to change, you, the way you work changed. And we already, there was already some systems in place for some organizations, but some of them already were already on par in order to adapt to those type of situations. But not everyone was very um, on that level. So I think it's going to be more important for businesses to make sure, especially with business rescue, um, what, what type of skills are needed. So for HR, definitely, because they're going to be continuous upskilling. There's going to be talent acquisitions going to be continuous. Um, it's going to change rapidly. You can see things change so rapidly. So you need to make sure you have a foundation already in place. And that is where HR comes in. They know they have the knowledge, the experience, and the exposure. So they know what to look out for in order to make sure the, the businesses can actually be successful if there's rapid change and so forth. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Professor Nall. Our next question is from Kevin. What happens if I'm unsure whether to study BCom Supply Chain Management or BCom Business Management? Isilla. Okay, that's a very good question. And I'd like to first start by saying that, you, you know, you're forced to sort of make a decision right after you finish your grade 12, but it's not going to be the decision for the rest of your life. You can still change that up. And the same thing applies with become business management and become supply chain strategy. So um, the idea is that the first year is very similar, right? We all know that mm -hmm. students do the same modules. And as they go through that experience, I think you should try and learn a little bit more about business management, learn a little bit more about um, supply chain management, speak to the lecturers, get a better understanding of what what suits your personality and then you are able to change that by just going to one of our faculty advisors and they are able to assist you with the change because the requirements for the two degrees are the same so you'd be able to chop and change uh, provided that we have space in whatever department or degree that you wish to change over to thank you so much our next question is from Kumo how long does it take for marketing students to get a job Professor Yodan. Sure, interesting question, <laughs> yes. Kumo. Right, so what do we know um, currently is that our students are very employable and I, I think it's because we do all these practical modules. So industry members actually get to see you in action, right, when you do these practical modules and a lot of our students actually land a job because they do well in our practical modules. But we know from experience that our students take between three and four months after they've graduated to, to get a job, right? But I guess it's also about how good you are at your interview and whether you can convince a panel that you will make a great marketer. Thank you so much, Bob. Um, our next question is from Lizola. How many years do I need to study before I can get practice as an industrial psychologist? Practice. Well, there is a difference between you can already uh, go into practice, but the thing is, you, in order to, to be an industrial psychologist, it takes about six to seven years. So it's a bit of a long study. <laughs> um, the thing is, it's very important because you're going to apply psychology in the workplace. You have to have that foundation, and it takes a while for you to get to that foundation. So you can't just go into and be a psychologist. It's like for the clinical and so and counselling psychologists, educational psychologists. So you can't. You have to be very aware, self-aware, social. You have to understand the deeper elements of psychology. And that takes a while. So in master's level, it's very hands-on, practical. So that is when the master's very equipped you in order to, uh, to make sure you are ready to go into an internship after your coursework. And you go to, through an internship where you do very practical things, holistically in dot psychology. And then you can write the board examination with the Health Professions Council. Then you can register as an industrial psychologist if you're successful in that board examination. And then you can practice and you can specialize in different fields of industrial psychology. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, our next question is from Chad Furi. This is an interesting one. Are marketers well paid? Professor oh, Yodan. Chad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if you're a good marketer, right, um, you'll be paid well. But, but interesting, there's a business insider study that was done in South Africa where they identified the top 10 highest paying jobs in the country. And two of the highest paid jobs we're marketing related jobs. So, so Chad, go for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so we've got one more question from uh, Daniel Diacha. Okay, so sorry about that. I think, um, that's the, it for the questions for today. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for the questions and thank you for engaging with us on social media. Um, if you're still eager to learn more about our faculty, please visit us online and get update information and please remember to follow us on Instagram. We wish you all the best with your final exams and we look forward to welcoming you to our faculty of EMS next year. And remember, hashtag choose UP. <laughs>